I'm home from a little tattoo session. I actually went to go do a session with my fave Louise because she's in town and she's opening up a new studio. So if you're from Vancouver and you're looking for a new tattoo parlor, check out Growing Pains Tattoos. I'll put their link in the description box below, but I got my first hand tattoo. This is a little x-ray rose that she did. And then I got a very special tattoo because I got Mika's name tattooed. I've been meaning and thinking about what to fill the space um, under my mandela or like my half mandela with. And honestly, I can't think of anything more special to me than Mika. So I got her name tattooed, little rose. And then I also got a little tattoo on this hand as well. It just says, divine which i thought was fitting because i think i'm divine but also just because my name is angel so it's kind of this like holy messaging but that is my little tattoo adventure for today i'm really really excited actually because i received this very special package from kbd craft i have been really getting into keyboards lately it's been absolutely my jam and when I saw this keyboard, I just knew I had to have it and try it and feature it because I already know that I will absolutely love it. This is such a cool keyboard and I'll explain why. If you are a keyboard enthusiast or have somehow ended up in the key TikTok world, you will probably have seen this before already, but this is a super cool keyboard because it's actually one of the world's first Lego keyboard builds. It's called the Kit Atom. This is what the box looks like. It's the world's first brick-built keyboard platform. It's a gasket mount, 64 key layout, hot swappable, RGB backlit, and 100% Lego compatible, which means that after I build this cutie, I will be able to customize it with genuine Lego pieces, which is so, so cool. I ordered some dinner because I couldn't be bothered to cook tonight. So I think this is what I am going to work on. So let's build a keyboard together. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. We have, this is so cute and I'm super excited about this, but it's like a little um, Lego guy that comes with the keyboard and these are the two that I got. We have, of course, the keycaps themselves. More keycaps. These are their special switches that they made. They're the S squared engine. They're linear, which are absolutely my favorite types of key um, switches. And these are super special because they will make this keyboard sound like you are building Lego. And we have all of the Lego pieces. How cool is that? We have coil cable, little stabilizers, sound pads, the instruction manual, of course. I'm gonna need that. Lego base, and then the Core 64, which is their actual like mount. And then you have more dampening pieces as well as a switch puller and keycap puller. a short intermission. I'm just having some sushi, which is my dinner for tonight. Got some soy sauce. I usually don't have soy sauce with like complicated sushis like this, but I tried this new sushi which has salmon skin in it and it's not my fave. So soy sauce will have to save the day. All right, obviously did not read the directions, but I had to take some of this apart because I forgot to put the actual core in, but we're back on track, guys. It's all good. This is actually my first time building a Lego set. Probably shouldn't have built a keyboard on my first try, but you know what? We're fine. Everything is fine. Okay, I'll do a proper video tomorrow when it's nice and bright out, but this is what the keyboard sounds like. Just a quick sneak peek. It's literally dark out, 
this took longer than I thought it would, so we're gonna come back tomorrow and actually test out the keyboard, but yeah, that's my new keyboard. I love it, it's so fun. All right, let's do a little sound test of the keyboard. Here she is in all her glory. I put together the two little characters as well, and I think they may be my favorite part about this keyboard. Here's my little skeleton as well and they fit right on this like piece right here. So it's super cute. Overall, I absolutely love how this keyboard sounds. I think it sounds really unique, but I do think that the stabilizers do need lubing. They actually mention that in like the little instruction sheet to actually lubricate your stabbies before you put them in, but obviously I was unprepared and I did not have lube, so that's sort of the next step. I'm gonna order lube and just make sure that I touch up the stabbies to give them a smoother sound, but you can kind of hear they sound a bit wacky or like loose. I don't exactly know how keyboard enthusiasts describe it. I don't know the lingo yet, but the keys themselves are very smooth and have this lovely poppy sound to it, which I think are absolutely my favorite keyboard sounds, like linear keys with a poppy, buttery sound to them, like a marbly poppy sound. This is exactly that. The aesthetic is also stunning and I just love it. I think it's such a cute keyboard and especially for the price, like it's so awesome. You can also fully customize it with Lego pieces if you want. I'm gonna make sure to link it in the description box below if you guys want to check it out, but yeah. Getting way, way too into this whole keyboard world and I'm so for it. Thought I would make some lunch now. I found this delicious looking udon recipe on Instagram. It's like a spicy miso udon. And I think that is what I'm gonna make. I feel like for this recipe, the udon that is like, I wanna say it's like pre-cooked is better than the frozen ones. Like the refrigerated ones is better for the, than the frozen ones. But I don't have that one. I only have the frozen ones. So we're going to try to make it work. But in the meantime, I can make the sauce. From the fridge, I need miso and minced garlic. So we're gonna need two. One and a half teaspoons of miso. Two tablespoons of hot water. One tablespoon of sesame oil. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. A splash of dark soy. Three teaspoons of sugar. Garlic. Freshly grated ginger. Give it a good mix. It smells really good. Here is the noodle. It smells insane. I didn't end up putting all the sauce because I felt like it didn't need it, but let's give this a try. I'm so excited to try this. <clears throat> wow. Damn. That is so freaking good. Wow. That is an incredible mixture of flavors. I am obsessed. And I'm just gonna sit and eat my lunch and also do a little bit of editing because I have so much footage to go through. I honestly did not do much work at all during my Europe trip. It just felt like the kind of trip I needed to take where I didn't work. And I'm glad that's how it turned out because I definitely needed it, but it's time now to get back to work and catch up.
Okie dokie. I'm going to head out soonish so that I can take Mika to the park, but also because I'm picking my significant other up from the airport because he comes back from Europe today. Um, he ended up taking a later flight than I because flight prices went up and he didn't book in time, but anywho, I'm glad he's coming back. Also, I took the Sanoderm off two of my tattoos. I left it on this one for now just because I have my watch on and I need to shoot content, so I didn't want it to get in the way, but I've honestly been putting off the hand tattoos for so long, even though I've wanted them for a really long time, but it's a really daunting thought because if you look at the rest of my tattoos, like I have tattoos on my torso and my legs and my arms, but if I just wear a long sleeve and long pants, suddenly it looks like I have no tattoos. And it's not even that I'm ashamed of my tattoos or anything like that, but there's just certain situations where it feels, I feel more comfortable having my tattoos hidden. So for example, when I'm seeing my grandma, it's not necessarily that I want to lie to her, it's just that it's not something that she really accepts, so it almost is better just to keep it out of her face as a sign of respect. Chinese culture can be very, very restricting, limiting, and traditional. I'm actually going to get dressed now, so I thought I would just do it with you guys. Not going to bother putting a bra on, just not feeling it today, you know? This is what the dress looks like. I think it's so cute and I love this crinkly fabric. table over the old one and we are going to unscrew the desk from the legs the space is so nice without the desk honestly but we're putting another one in I have all the pieces here I didn't open the desktop yet because I won't need that till later but let's go ahead and build a desk you know one two right out of the box look how well organized their screws are it correlates with the letters telling you which one you need in the instructions so instead of just giving you a bag of screws that you have to figure out like which is what letter or number it tells you. Big ups because that can sometimes be definitely the most frustrating part. I really feel like I'm making such good leeway. It's nuts, but we're already on the part where I'm installing the feet. Like how crazy is that? Another amazing thing that they've done is with the organization, not only did they put it, like split the screws into the right letters, 
it's also step by step so at first you only use a then you only use b then you only use c instead of other companies who will be like okay use 2a in step one but then like you use the rest of the a's in step five the way that they've done it just makes it literally foolproof we have the desktop so i'm so excited to have a change we're back at the part where we need to use a proper screwdriver. Another thing that's been really awesome is that all of their electronics, they've figured out a way to mount it to the actual desktop. Whereas I found that competitor brands will sort of make you like, figure it out yourself, which gets pretty annoying. You have to manage your desk cables along with your um, computer cables does end up being a pain sometimes so i really appreciate the little detail of them just having this sorted for you i think overall their attention to detail has been really really amazing so far and i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty impressed it looks so good honestly so excited for the new change let's go ahead and reinstall everything. Next is the big boy, which is my monitor. All right. Setting up the height. New office is complete. Oh my God, I love it. It feels very different, I'm not going to lie. And I think I'm actually not done yet because I want to mount my little adapter dock down underneath, probably on the left side here, so that I have even less stuff on the desk. I think it does make it kind of difficult that I have a decent amount of like equipment on my desk. So for example, I have this L-shaped arm that I keep on my desk. So when you're watching my day in the life of a marketing manager videos, the shot actually comes from here and you're looking into my kitchen, but then I'm also able to set up a tripod on this side and film this way. I also have a desk light for when I'm burning the midnight oil and then slightly behind that, that's like kind of tucked away, is my <laughs> mic and that sits on an arm as well. So, I mean, it is decently strategically placed. Like the mic obviously doesn't need to hang over the desk that often, only when I use it. And then when I don't need to use it, I can tuck it away actually like behind the monitor a little bit so you don't see it as much. Everything definitely has a home, but it just makes it feel a little bit more cluttered because in that corner itself, there's a lot going on. But I'm super happy with the color of the desktop and sort of this natural feel that it's brought to my workspace. I just have so much white in this workspace, like my bookshelf is white. A lot of my tech gear is actually white or silver. So I think having the warm desktop really makes a difference in just changing the overall vibe a little bit when it comes to my workspace. Mm -hmm. 